Hey y'all, it's me, Kevy. So all year, I have been looking forward to this video, an opportunity to rant about all of my most hated books all at once. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be good. So here we are, my worst reads of 2021. The first truly awful book I read in 2021 was The Clocks by Agatha Christie. At this point, I'd read about two dozen Christies and was familiar with her formula. The book had set up some awesome twists. The girl who found the body and the woman whose home they found the body in, it sounded like they were going to be mother and daughter. And the implication being that the deceased, the victim, was the girl's father. But no, her paternity question was never answered. And instead, the corpse was just some random dude from Canada? How is that supposed to be a satisfying ending? The whole familial connection was a red herring. And then, because Poirot was fucking bored, he challenged himself to figure out who done it without leaving his desk. Well, he had figured out who did it, but didn't have the proof. So in true Poirot fashion, kept his mouth shut. And in doing so, allows the murderer to keep on murdering. A woman dies because of Poirot's arrogance and refusal to share what she knew. Sure, he didn't know, no. But he could have at least said, hey, I think this is the tea. I've just got a few letters out at the moment. And when I hear back from them, they'll confirm what I already suspect. Christy really didn't like Poirot by this time. And you can tell. This is Poirot at his worst. He fucking sucks, and the third death in this book is entirely his fault. Oh my gosh, this is by far the worst Christie I have read. And while I have read my share of weaker Christies, nothing has ever come close to being as awful as the clocks. Next up, we have A Man Lay Dead by Niall Marsh. I was excited to read this book because it's from the golden era of detective fiction, so she's one of Christie's contemporaries. This one is the first book in the Detective Roderick Allen series. The book had an excellent premise. Party guests were playing a murder game where someone pretends to be murdered and then the other people have to figure out who did the pretend murder. But then when they find the victim, he's dead for real. See, that premise starts out strong, but that is the only thing the book does right. There are two batches of suspects, the Red Scare Russian commies, and those affected by adultery. The only people who don't have very obvious motives are the protagonist and his lover. For some reason, when the detective arrives, he just assumes that they must not have done it and insists on them helping him with the case. And then, just like in Khalil, communism was just a red herring. It's so stupid. Red Scare propaganda in general just really gets on my nerves. But it was ridiculous in this book. These men were Russian. So obviously they must be part of some communist conspiracy to overthrow some shit. And they waste so much time on this Red Scare bullshit when it really had nothing to do whatsoever with the murder case. Oh, it sucked so bad. And I repeatedly fell asleep while reading it. <laughs> I am glad it's over and honestly don't know if I will read her again. I read The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks because of Nell and Scott at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Scott claims it's one of his all-time favorite books, while Nell says it's garbage and offensive. I was so intrigued by this polarizing dynamic and I had to give it a read. This book's worst crime is that it's boring. So boring. I really struggled through most of it because apart from the times when the protagonist is violently killing people, it was just so uninteresting. The book is also very transphobic, but not even in an outrageous sort of way. I was really looking forward to getting to the transphobic part so I could be like, ah, that's so fucked up and shit, rah. <laughs> but no, it wasn't even properly offensive. It was just sad, pitiful. I hated this book. So much. I wound up returning the ebook because it was just so stupid. What She Knew by Miranda Rikes was the first book I read from NetGalley. I'd read somewhere that you should start using NetGalley by reading some of the read now options where you don't have to be approved. It's just you can go ahead right into it. And this read now seemed the most interesting. It's about a woman whose best friend is murdered a decade ago. And now as people are digging into the story, they realize the wrong person may have been put away for this crime. This book was a pain to read. The writing style just did not connect with me, causing a relatively short book to take me weeks 
to get through. And it was painfully predictable. You know I love solving mysteries and shit, but in this case there was no mystery. No twist or nothing. The whole thing is building up a case against one person, and that's who it ends up being. It was just not good. So I've already discussed my worst Christie of the year, which was the clocks, and now I want to talk about my most boring Agatha Christie of the year, which was Cat Among the Pigeons. Damn, this book was a bore. The mystery of the missing jewels was so obvious from the beginning, and the murder mystery was just a snooze fest. Like the clocks, Poirot only appears in a handful of chapters toward the end of the book. I assume this must be one of those cases where the publishers insisted Christie turn a standalone into a Poirot novel. While Poirot's presence did improve the book somewhat, his appearance was so brief that it just didn't do anything to save the story. Finally, the absolute worst book I read in 2021 was the dumpster fire called Inheritance of Secrets by Sonia Bates. This book is a Nazi propaganda romance. Yeah. What the fuck? It's about a woman's grandparents getting brutally murdered. And while she's trying to uncover who killed them, she discovers more of their Nazi history. Which, that alone sounds like a cool premise, had it not gone in the direction that it did. Rather than being horrified and disgusted by her grandparents' actions, she instead tries to prove that her grandfather wasn't one of the bad Nazis. He was just a good guy following orders, so he wasn't really a Nazi. Ma'am, that is not how this works. He was a Nazi soldier in the Nazi army fighting on behalf of the motherfucking Nazis. There's no way you can paint that where he isn't a literal Nazi. And then there's the whole dual timeline bullshit, so we can go back in time and watch the fucking Nazi fall in love. And then on top of it, this author had the motherfucking audacity to compare the treatment of Jews by the Nazis to the treatment of Nazis by everyone else after the war. Like, how can you compare those two behaviors? Nazis murdered millions of people. They're awful. Millions of Jews were murdered for discrimination. They had no reason to be hated on. Nazis definitely fucking did. That is just the most vile thing that I have read this year. What the fuck, Sonya Bates? What is your motherfucking problem? I don't give a flying fuck that your granddaddy was a fucking Nazi too, which he was, I looked it up. I don't care if your grandfather was a good Nazi. No, he was a fucking Nazi. And you don't make fucking books in this year of our Lord, 2021, trying to say that some Nazis are okay. No, we do not need sympathetic portrayals of Nazis, especially in 2021, especially as neo-Nazis are on the fucking rise and how much of a real, genuine threat they are to our society and to marginalized people. So yeah, this book can fuck off and burn in a ditch. <laughs> so yeah, those were the worst books I read last year. Have you had the misfortune of reading any of these? What did you think of them? What was your worst read of 2021? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if it pleases and sparkles, I'll see you in the next video. Mwah! <laughs> Fuck Nazis.